Right, good morning everyone. Um, that one. Yeah. I'm quite surprised that there's actually anyone here given it's 10 a.m. 10 in the morning. Um, so uh, my name's uh, Gunter Olman. with me is uh, Stefan Fry. Uh, there's a couple of other people that uh, couldn't make it uh, here today, um, Thomas Dubinoffer and uh, Martin May. So we're, we're talking about uh, some uh, research that we did uh, recently, a paper uh, last month on this. Uh, so we're talking about uh, how do we, you know, what happens to the internet if you manage to exploit uh, your 100 million plus uh, hosts, uh, hopefully before brunch. So we weren't quite sure about what sort of state would be in, so if, you, if you're wondering about the little G in the top right hand corner that's a reminder to us uh, who's, it, who's actually meant to be speaking. So. And as you can probably tell that uh, from the accents, we're not precisely uh, locals, so here we go. So the situation. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, the internet's getting more and more hostile. There's a lot more profit-motivated attacks. There's a new sort of a hack economy about uh, uh, you know, who's going to be doing this attacks, how much money you're going to make. Um, there's been a lot of uh, press about the, the mass defacements, you know, all these iframe injection code, uh, all these iframe injections uh, using uh, cross-site scripting or search engine optimization, uh, already driving the drive-by downloads uh, type of things. And you know, if, we're, if you look at the press, you've probably seen all these things uh, about uh, you know, there was a big uh, SEO attack uh, in March uh, where just one of, the, uh, one of the URLs in the injection was about 1.2 million uh, defacements, uh, or page defacements. Uh, from where I work and all that, so, you know, we, we're, we're current, currently monitoring about, about 100,000 uh, new defacements or repeat defacements uh, uh, every week, and so these are all uh, typical iframe injections, all driving to a particular website or websites in Hong Kong, China, these sorts of things. And uh, you know, given all this information about all the, the websites being hacked and all these mass defacements and all that, we sort of thought, yeah, there's an awful lot of data about uh, about the servers and about what's happening there. But if you actually manage to do a really good, good uh, iframe injection and manage to install it onto uh, you know, a fairly very popular site. What would be the real damage? You know, how many, you know, how many hosts out there? So how many web users are actually out there today that would be infected uh, through these uh, fairly common attack vectors? And to have a look at that side and try to get a, a, you know, a sort of a ground truth of you know, if you've got everything just running just right, you know, how big a damage could you actually do? So, you know, that's what we we're interested in finding out. So. So what we've sort of looked at this, you know, so how do we measure this? How do we understand how many uh, vulnerable web users and vulnerable web browsers there are out there? Nice easy one, you know, the user agent fields. So in every single HTTP packet, you know, the nice user agent in there. You know, if you're using anything except for Internet Explorer, minor version information about that particular web browser. And in fact, you know, most of the web browsers now, uh, with all the additional plugins, you also get a lot of details about uh, the actual plugins that have been installed on top of those web browsers. Okay, and uh, of course, you know, any single, uh, just well, just about every single web server will record that information, and it's more of a case of just sifting out uh, the user agent information. And um, yeah, the browser version, particularly the minor version, will uh, can be easily associated to a particular. So, how do we get that information? You know, someone, or one of us, had a good idea, of saying, "Well, Google has lots of web servers; they get lots of traffic. You know, how can we sort of uh, get our hands on some sort of information?" So uh, we managed to get hold of uh, our work with, uh, with Google uh, on the analysis of the, their web logs. So we had access to uh, all of their um, uh, user agents data uh, by day uh, from between January 2007 through to uh, January 2nd. Uh, so great thanks to, to Google for giving us that. And it's, you know, everyone understands just how big Google is. And, uh, you know, this is the sort of the first study to actually have access to that truly global data set and that massive, massive volume of data. But a key thing is, you know, no, we didn't hack Google. We actually just asked them very politely uh, for access to the information. So. Okay, and <clears throat> this is what we found out based on our measurements. More than 37 million users do not uh, always use the latest, most secure version of their browsers. We came up uh, by measuring directly using this methodology, Opera, Safari, and Firefox. You see their uh, respective numbers. And we estimated Internet Explorer. I'll show you later how we came up with this estimate. As with an iceberg, the tip above the water is just the smaller part. The bigger part below the water is 
what we couldn't measure, and this is vulnerability in uh, plugins that even the most secure browser can be owned by that. So more interesting, the numbers I showed you for, uh, before is just at the end of our observation period. Now we looked at what is the evolution of the share of the latest major version of those four browsers. What we see here is, for example, uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer 7, they have uh, different dynamics. They were released in about the same month. Firefox acquired about more than 90% uh, of the share within Firefox browser versions. Uh, Internet Explorer 7 is still uh, only about uh, half of the percentage or half of the people that use that browser. Very interesting also if you look at uh, Safari 3, uh, around uh, July 2007, this was the uh, beta version that was released and we, we observed the jump from ar around zero to about 10%. Looks like they have better user community. Then we have uh, the next two jumps is the official release of Safari 3 and then the massive rollout together with the new version of the operating system. When you look at uh, Internet Explorer 7, around Christmas 2007, uh, January 2008, uh, looks like lots of people got uh, new boxes with uh, Windows installed. Another observation is the uh, end of support of uh, Firefox 1.5. If again, if you look at May 2007, there's a big jump in uh, Firefox. So Firefox end of May uh, was the latest version of 1.5 released and the big jump happened then when the first patch that was only available for Firefox 2 was released. So this was obviously a huge incentive for people to upgrade their browsers. So this was the major version of the browsers. Now we look at within the major, latest major version, what is the pool that we found that uh, applied all the patches available at a certain date. So the maximum share of most secure browser versions we found was in Firefox within those 1.5 years when we measured, and they had 83.3% at max. So at the other end, we found uh, Internet Explorer at maximum 47.6%. Part of uh, this situation is because Internet Explorer still has a, a huge share of all the versions that you are like uh, Internet Explorer 6 and below us. They don't have technologies like uh, anti phishing and so on that we need in today's uh, hostile environment. Okay, as said before, uh, Internet Explorer 7 doesn't uh, reveal the minor version. So we uh, had a look at the Secunia's Personal Software Inspector, very nice tool that every one of you can install, and it, it passes the, the registry and reports the, the versions it finds back home. Obviously, using the user agent string is unbiased because you all contributed to our measurement without uh, uh, knowing it. But if you uh, use PSI, uh, you have to install a tool first. So the results from PSI are biased. If we take directly the results from PSI, we see 4.4% of uh, Internet Explorer 7 is not patched. If we compare results from Secuna with our measurement results, we find a correction factor of around 2.1 in their data. And we use this correction factor of 2.1 to come up with our number of 600 and. Uh, 37 million uh, hosts at risk. Okay, what's the dynamics? If we zoom in, in about the two or three months uh, window, we see here the update dynamics for two uh, updates of uh, Firefox, 2007, 2007, 2008. We have very, very high dynamics within the say, first three days after the release of a new version. So the latest version, and then it uh, gets up with the most uh, recent version. We see in about three days, Firefox population uh, installs about, or 80% of the Firefox po population installs uh, the most uh, recent version. We also see a very sharp decline of the second latest version. So say a couple of days, 10 or 20 days after the release of a new patch, the second latest version uh, drops easily below 5%. Compare Firefox and Opera on the whole year 2007. This is uh, the dynamics we found. So we used Firefox and Opera, those, they are very similar. Those are free browsers. They run on a, on a, on a big selection of uh, operating systems. 
We again see the same uh, dynamics I showed before, repeated for uh, Firefox. On the other hand, on uh, Opera, technically it's the same dynamics, but it's much, much slower. So it, for Opera, it takes more than 11 days percent of what they had before a new patch uh, was released. And the share of obsolete or very old versions still is very, very high for Opera, just because they expand the time uh, so much. Another observation is this uh, sawtooth on top of uh, Firefox. We call this the weekend effect. It uh, turns out that uh, the most recent version of Firefox is more popular during the weekend, at the weekend, than during the week. Uh, probably our option is that the private users uh, adopt new versions faster than corporate users in their environment. Cool. So. Obviously, you know, when you're looking at uh, all these different browsers, major and minor versions, the question really becomes, you know, why aren't people upgrading? Why aren't they uh, patching and you know, applying these latest security fixes, the latest major advances uh, to, their, to their software? And frankly, you know, users themselves, the general population, probably you know, excluding anyone here, uh, know when, why, and how to patch their systems. Okay? And they don't understand really why they need to upgrade to these newer features. And uh, you know, when we look at even some of the, the better um, updating systems uh, for the, the browsers, uh, the, the messages that are popping up and the, the advance and the advice provided to, uh, to the users is generally seen as bothering. Okay, and so if they can click through by cancel or whatever, then that's what they tend to do. Um, so you know, how can things sort of be helped? Uh, you know, can we nudge them and all that? You know, the normal sort of way is you know, try to scare the shit out of them, really. And, um, <coughs> Generally, that sort of uh, works in the, uh, you know, for, for techies, uh, but you know, the vast majority of people out there running uh, web browsers, surfing the internet, uh, have no idea, and uh, you know, exploits, vulnerabilities mean nothing to them. Malware means nothing to them. You know, when they brought their uh, Dell computer in, you know, in 2000, uh, it came with a three-month uh, license of uh, McAfee, and uh, you know, aren't they still safe from that? So one of the things that we're sort of thinking about where you know, we put in the paper for a bit of a discussion was what happens if you take something that you know, is well known to consumers, you know, consumers of uh, software and consumers of uh, anything. And we thought, well, what about if you try to apply a best before date or best before philosophy to software? You know, so it works really well in food. You know, and uh, when you're going down to the, the grocery store and you see a bottle of milk there, you check out the best before date or you know, expires by date. Um, you know what that means to you. Uh, you know, as you get closer to that expiry date, you know, you'll might sniff the milk a little bit. If it's a week after the milk uh, expiry date, you're going to be very wary of it. You know, it's not saying that you, you don't use it. Uh, it just makes you more aware of, <coughs> of uh, what you should be doing uh, about, that, uh, about that particular consumer item. And so we're sort of <coughs> thinking about uh, you know, can you apply that to, uh, to software and to particular web browsers. And you know, as, as one example, we're sort of looking at you know, how could you get this idea across? And so here's a, a, you know, if you imagine that uh, the browser itself is now telling you that uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been expired for a certain number of days uh, and there's a certain number of patches uh, that are missing. Yeah, this is by far not a, a solution. You know, ideally, the, the ideal solution is that uh, auto updates uh, work silently, work 100% of the time, and do it instantaneously. Um, but you know, just making uh, users aware of what these problems are may be the, the first sort of step. We've had a lot of uh, feedback from uh, organizations, particularly financial organizations, that like the uh, expiry dates and best before dates uh, associated with browsers in particular so that they can sort of work out in advance uh, whether you know, their customers, as they connect to their websites and start using them, uh, if they're using a very old browser, you know, the probability that they've already been compromised in some way is, gets uh, incrementally higher, so they can do extra back-end checking about you know, fraudulent transfers and other transactions. So what can we sort of uh, say in conclusion? Well, you know, first of all, you know, if you want to hack a planet, you don't need a zero day. Okay? Uh, a well-placed uh, iframe on a, a popular search engine would be more than enough to uh, generate, you know, gather a you know, hundred million odd uh, infected web browsers uh, you know, on a daily or weekly basis. You know, this isn't uh, big stuff, this is very, very easy stuff. Um, you know, Actually, browser patching itself is a very complex problem. You know, uh, there has been a great improvement in those uh, auto-patching technologies, but they're still you know, a long way from actually uh, working the way. 
you know, and from our analysis, you know, we're, we're quite happy to say that you know, Firefox is uh, leading the pack on actually getting the, the auto updating and the actual uh, patching process working for web browsers the best. But you know, patching itself is only really part of the solution. Uh, this whole thing is really about this uh, uh, ergonomics of how easy it is to actually use these uh, um, the patching processes. You know, so when we looked at uh, comparing you know, Firefox with uh, Opera, you know, uh, Firefox requires uh, one click uh, to apply the, the latest updates, on average about 11 clicks uh, to install uh, the latest version. Now, I, I guess you know, from what we're sort of seeing and uh, you know, a lot of the um, uh, psycholo uh, psychology or psychologic analysis of uh, these popular uh, these of these processes are really basically seeing that you know, uh, if you re have to require, you know, the, if you have to prompt the user, you're going to fail. And uh, normally what you see on any of these browser technologies is any time that there is a pop-up message saying, you know, you need to do this or uh, there's an option, it means that the expert who wrote the web browser or the expert who developed the application didn't know what to do themselves. So given we're all sort of uh, experts in one, some sense or not, you know, here I've got a couple of screenshots. So, can you tell from the, these two screenshots uh, which browser is missing the last eight patches uh, and is still running you know, uh, Flash version 6, A or B? It's a sort of trick question because it's uh, IE6 so we didn't class it as uh, the most secure. So frankly, for any user, there is no visual way of being able to tell whether you're using a secure browser or an insecure browser and how many patches you're missing. So if we don't know, as the experts, then how are you know, 1.4 billion users supposed to know that they are still using the right sort of technologies? So with that, I think our time is sort of up, so I'd like to say uh, thanks, and of course, yeah, you all contributed to our results uh, if you've ever used uh, any uh, Google services. Uh, and I guess we've got a, a few questions, uh, for questions, if there are any. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.